from the third position. Starting fourth in car number 64, that's going to be Patrick Starpoli. The 57 of Bray Holmes will start fifth. Starting six tonight in car number 46, that's going to be Cody Stickler. Ron Lofquist will start seventh in car number 49. Starting from the eighth spot, car number 22 for Robert Jonas. Travis Rowland will start ninth in car number 34. Chase Lovelady rounding out your top 10 here in car number eight. Starting 11th will be car number three for Derek Pugh. To his outside in the 12th starting spot will be the 21 of Derek Kelly. Starting 13th will be Cody McDuffie in car number 25. And it's the 97 of Brian Dorer. He'll start 14th. 15th starting spot for the 09 of Scott Grossenbacher. Starting 16th will be the 38 of Shane Sawyer. 17th will be Chase King in car number 24. Starting 18th in car number 55, it'll be Richard Elkins Jr. And starting from the 19th spot, car number 62 for John Gerstner. Those were the three cars, or excuse me, the 19 cars that took time. The three that didn't, you have the 22K of David King. Car number 44 for Wayne Smith and the 16 for Eddie King Sr. Looks like David King and Wayne Smith have both made it onto the track. I do not see the 16 of Eddie King. So a reminder, we are broadcasting live on Pit Road TV. The first 25 laps of this race, you'll get a free preview on Facebook. You just go to Pit Road TV on Facebook for a free preview tonight live for the first 25 laps of this race. So if you have some friends that couldn't make it to the track tonight, tell them, hey, you can catch the first half of this race live or if they're running a little behind, that way they won't miss anything. Lots of action to take place here tonight at Auburndale. One feature in the books. We still have five to go here. Looks like 20 cars have made it onto the track. The 16 of Eddie King not out here. Not sure who else is missing. Looks like we're missing the pole sitter. 146 of John Guy not out here. Uh, his car and Cody Stickler's almost identical. So it looks like John Guy is going to make it back out here. So for whatever reason, the 146 of John Guy had to make his way to the pit area. Being told he is making his way back to the track. Uh, they're doubled up ready to go so not sure if he'll have to start on the tail they are positioned as if he does but we'll see if that's the case as he's now made his way to the track entrance scheduled to start p1 but uh, we'll see if And there's John Guy. It looks like he will have to tag on to the tail of the field. And we are ready to go. 50 laps of super late model action ready to go. Nick Neary in the 17, Daniel Webster in the 33, 
and the green is out. Webster with a pretty good start on the outside. As Neary races him off turn two now into turn three. Door to door, wheel to wheel off turn four. Who's gonna lead lap one? Nobody right now as the caution comes out. Yellow flag is out. Not quite sure what the caution is for there as we were not able to get that lap in. So it looks like it will be a complete restart. As Steve has made his way back up to the tower. Uh, Steve, not exactly the outing you were hoping for there in the street stock, but got nope. that out of the way and we'll Focus on the rest of the night. There you go. And some Easter hunting here, or whatever they're doing. Yeah, I'm still not quite sure what they're doing. For well, that, but. I made it faster up here than I did around the track. Just lack speed, lack power. We're going to check some plug wires, a couple things. Try to stay out of the way. Kick this, was able to flat foot it through the turn, so definitely down on power. Well, if there is a silver lining, your other cars, uh, Jason Bartram did have a pretty good run, made it up to fourth. Uh, Looked like it was a little slippery out there. Kind of hard to pass when the race went green to checkered. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Stuck on the outside a little bit too long. So I'm glad to be up here to get caught up to speed with the super late models, which are the show tonight. Good to see Nick Neary back. Danny Webster on the front row as well. Yeah, you didn't miss much here as they called off the initial start. Uh, the 146 of John Guy was scheduled to start on pole. He had to go to the pits and start the tail of the field as we try this again here. Green flag is back out. Daniel Webster on the outside. He's going to be able to clear near you this time. Webster trying to make that outside work. Cody Stickler says, hey, let me give that a shot as Nick Neary's down on the inside. Preferred line, Ron Lofman's coming off the front stretch wall a little bit. Right in front of us, Travis Rowland. Yeah, Neary kind of bogged down there on that inside line. He's got Cody Stickler to his outsides. We're three wide, and that is not going to work. Caution coming out there. Brian Dorr getting into the 49 of Ron Lofquist. Robert Jonas nowhere to go. A bystander in that one. And it looks like the 38 of Shane Sawyer also dusted up in that one there. Lofquist is going to pull to the infield as well as the 44 of Smith, Wayne Smith. And 38, let's see what he's doing. Yeah, there's definitely some front end damage on the 49. I'm not sure if it's a tie rod or something else, but looked like he got hit from the 97 of Dorr and spun down across into the path of Robert Jonas. Yeah, and we, Lofquist has the window net down, as you see on Pit Road TV. Lofquist, as I was calling it the previous lap, looked like he was just a little bit slower than the, the cars behind him. And early on, I'm not sure what transpired there. People ran out a little bit of patience, just trying to get track position when they could. But as it stands right now, we do have one lap in the book, in the books. Daniel Webster is your leader. Yeah, we'll see our first restart of the night as Lofquist climbing out of his car, obviously upset there um had a decent qualifying effort he qualified seventh got to start fifth with john guy going to the tail there and uh didn't get a good look at the start of it but i know they went three wide and that usually doesn't work here nope there's only so much room for error on this track so good to see a lot of other cars were able to make evasive action not get caught up in that because Usually when it happens in front of you, there's nowhere to go, kind of like we saw the 38 as he's gone pit side. Hopefully they can get whatever's going on with that car repaired. That's a new car to me as well. I don't think I've seen that car before. No, ne Sawyer. Neither have I. It looked like they were checking up there, and he just couldn't get woed up fast enough. Uh, did Robert Jonas go in as well? As, no, he's still out there. So Robert Jonas in the 22 is still on the track. He's got a little bit of right front damage. Uh, I suppose it's just cosmetic, or he probably would have taken it pit side by now. And it's, I can attest to this, it's pretty warm out there still as we starting a little bit earlier with the change in the time. We start at 6 p.m. as we're getting our 
first main event feature going here at 6.30, so it's still pretty warm out there. As we went 30 laps green, I was, well, I think I went 28 laps. The rest of everybody went 30 laps, but it was pretty warm out there. You're kind of having to work through two time changes simultaneously here at Auburndale. You decided this year to start earlier in the evening at 6 p.m., and then you had daylight savings time on top of that. So you're out here in the heat. Track's pretty slippery. Uh, not a whole lot of grip out right now. Yeah, and if you are watching us on Pit Road TV or listening on Track Tune, it is 80 degrees here at Auburndale Speedway. And if you're wondering where we're at, just pretty much take your finger and point to the middle of the state of Florida. That's basically where we're at kind of a little bit to the, I guess it's say southwest of Orlando. Yeah, and despite the heat, uh, great crowd here tonight at Auburndale. Yeah, a lot of uh, the northern tracks that are on the Pit Road TV broadcast and the other areas are just now starting up their race season. We've got several races in the books as we've started in January. We had a couple rain outs already this year, but it's good to have the, the late models able to get in their second event and this is their second race in march you you were here hopped on the mic last time they were here i think it was the first saturday of march and they're going to close out the second saturday of march yeah the last i'm sorry yeah as we get ready to roll into april there uh we don't really have much of an off season in florida we take a mid-season break during the summer months it just gets so hot and then you have to deal with a lot of precipitation as well it just makes more sense to cut the summer out than it does the winter down here since we don't get much of a winter yeah, and our mid-season break, break here at Auburndale this year also is going to be even cut even shorter. We're just going to take July off. We're going to take a little bit of um, October off as well, have some renovations here at the track. So it looks like Webster chose the outside. If you remember last time you were here, Austin, that the outside is where it was firing off. And it was funny for us to call that first lap and say that, you know, near you stuck down on the inside because you're normally stuck on the outside. The inside is usually the preferred line here at Auburndale, but... Yeah, and with these, with these super late models, it seems to be different on the restarts. Um, that outside line, you're kind of up into that traction compound. Once it gets heated up, it's pretty grippy up there. And the guy on the bottom, he can't really carry the whole corner off up to the wall on the restarts. It's kind of bound down at the bottom. And We're going to stay yellow here, Austin. I think, oh, he's Dylan's going to show him one to go this time. Yeah, so we'll see. Like you said, Steve, at the beginning of the month, it was the outside line that was working on the restarts. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, funny enough, it was Daniel Webster who got pinched down on the bottom at just about every restart with Colin Allman. Yeah, and he's, he was taking to school. If, if you could ever take Danny Webster to school, he was taking to school then, and now he's remembering that as he's chosen the outside. Yeah, we'll see what he's learned here on this restart as we go back green. One lap in, 49 to go. And you do it's see a it. Good... Webster's able to fire off, but... Now he's able to clear Neary, drop down as soon as the spotter tells him he's clear. The 64, Dr. Starpoli trying to work the outside as well. Coming off the wall, a little bit loose on the exit of four there for the 64. He's able to possibly duck down in front of Ray Holmes. Oh, we have more trouble in the back. We've got Derek Pugh going around in turn two and the number three. Derek Pugh is making his first super late model start tonight. He is a... Uh, Pro Truck Series standout. Got a lot of wins and years in the Pro Truck Series. And tonight he's making his first super late model start. And I didn't catch that, Austin. I don't know what happened over there. But it looks like whatever took place, he's headed the wrong direction. But he's able to back it up and get it pointing in the right direction. Quite a bit of damage to the front nose. He was running last time I looked. And they've got it here on Pit Road TV. He was running 10th, or 10th and 11th area on the restart. Yeah, it looks like he was running around the 25 of Cody McDuffie. I think we've seen a damage on the 25 of McDuffie. A little bit on the right front. Don't know if that was there previously or not. Yeah, and there was some contact with the 55 of Elkins, but that was after the 33 was already spinning. We, we do have just have a couple laps in the books but early on Cody Stickler's been the fastest car on the track with his just the small, small sample that we have with a 13681 on lap two yeah not really any chance to get in a rhythm just yet we've had um, really three quick cautions we call off the initial start and then we had two dust ups uh, not really any big incidents uh, we did lose 
the 49 to run Lofquist, however. Looks like the 33, or excuse me, the 38. Shane Sawyer, he hasn't returned to the track either. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to make it out for feature race number two later on tonight because if they do, then they're going to have a lot fresher tires than these guys that are going to have some of them 50 laps on the tires plus qualifying laps. So it's uh, not a strategy, but it's it's plays into their hand if they're able to make out, make it out for lap no, or race number two. Joe's picking up some debris on the back stretch, it looks like, because we've got bits and pieces everywhere. And we're going to clear the track and get ready to go back green and try to get some log, some green flag laps, if you will. Yeah, because these guys are going to have 100 laps in total tonight, uh, split up between two races. So don't have to run all 100 at once here, but definitely want to get into a rhythm. Good to see Richard Elkins even early on up in the 12th position. He's had a lot of challenges with that car last couple times out here at Auburndale and over at New Smyrna Speedway as well. Yeah, and he did catch the nose of the three of Derek Pugh as the three had spun around. So a little bit of damage on the right front. Hopefully it's nothing too serious there, and he can keep going. Uh, the three of Derek Pugh has gone off the track as we get ready for the twos here, Steve. And I believe Daniel's probably going to pick the outside again. If I was a betting man, which I'm not, um, I would say he's picking the outside. Stickler's going to follow him as well. Let's see who else is going to. Travis Rowland. He's, if you look at the 34 when he comes back around, he's got a little bit of tire rub on the right front as well. So we might have missed quite a bit of action in those first handful of laps, two laps. Yeah, and, and Travis knows how to get around this place. I'm not sure how much late model experience he has. I've personally never seen him run a Super before, but I've seen him in just about everything else. Yep, it's got a steering wheel and four wheels. He's going to do it. As we're getting ready to go back green here on the exit of turn four, right where the cone is. And green flag is in the air. Webster with another good start. See if he can clear the 17 of Neary. Neary's trying to hang with him a little bit tough. It's a drag race on the backstretch. Webster is now clear. Not quite. Yeah, he's able to take the spot away there from Neary. They kind of got bottled up a little bit behind the 64 of Star Poli as Bray Holmes and Travis Rowland are still side by side for the fifth spot. We got Scott Grossenbacher pretty loose on the exit of turn two on the, in the back half of the field. Yeah, and further back, the 25, Cody McDuffie has his hands full on the outside as John Guy, supposed to start on the pole for this race, quick qualifier, had to start in the back due to some adjustments. Chase Lovelady and, and Travis Rowland going at it back there. It's going to open the door for the 22, of Jonas. Yeah, and it looked like Roland had a little help there from the aid of Chase Lovelady last time through turn one, got him up and out of the groove. Out front, it's all Daniel Webster, though. Cody Stickler trying to take a peek to the outside of the 17. Looks like the 20, is that King? The 22 is pulling to the infield. Yeah, and these top three right now, Webster, Neary, and Stickler, Three guys that have a lot of experience in the late models. They know how to save their stuff. They're just, as I say, they're just trying to ride. Neary sees an opportunity to go for the lead. And Stickler with a crossover looking for three wide. Stickler, one of those drivers, just like Travis Rowland, put a steering wheel in his hand. He's going to go no matter what it is. Well, Stickler saw the carrot dangling in front of him but thought better of the situation. We still have a lot of laps left to go. Now was not the time to take it three wide. He backed out of it and gets back in line. Yep, that's. I think that's going to go in the memory bank for Daniel Webster. Take advantage of the outside on the restarts, but get down and shut the low side down as, as much as possible. As Patrick Starpoli is going to look for the top three there. Yeah, and he was able to clear Neary there on the restart. It just looked like he was trying that middle groove, perhaps trying to heat up that traction compound laid down in that middle line and just wasn't ready yet. Neary was able to take advantage. Starpoli trying to fight to the inside for that third position. Starpoli now resides in Texas, so he's making the long trip over here to Auburn L Speedway when he has an opportunity. Right behind them, Bray Holmes. Good to see Holmes running in top five with that number 57. And Starpoli is going to be able to clear Webster as Bray Holmes up there as well. Going to go to the outside of Webster here. So perhaps Daniel Webster's car just not to his liking right now. He's able to get it down low, though. 
And M57 hanging right there with him. Chase Lovelady coming into the picture as well for the top six. Yeah, and how about the run right now, Steve, for Bray Holmes? So we've seen him cut his teeth here in the pro trucks, the pure stocks. Had a couple of pro late mall starts last year, but really holding his own right now with the Supers. Yeah, he's had quite a few challenges with the Super Late Models. He he seemed to run better last year with a pro late model with the Super Late Models. They went to the Bill Bigley race down on the Freedom Factory last year, blew a motor. This is the second race out with a new motor, and it seems to be coming in, coming to life in that M57. Yeah, whatever's under the hood of that thing, it is pretty strong right now, and a good driver behind the wheel to boot. Right now, fifth place run for Bray Holmes. His lap 18 goes on the board here. 32 laps to go for our first of two Super Late Model features. It is Nick Neary out in front. And just a reminder to our Pit Row TV viewers that are live on Facebook right now, uh, just five laps to go in this before we cut our free preview. So go ahead and give you a chance to subscribe to Pit Row TV so you can catch all the action here tonight at Auburndale Speedway. PitRow.tv is where you want to go as we were covering that. Looks like the 25 of Cody McDuffie pulled to the infield. Going to end at least this race for him. Yeah, looks like he's hopefully nothing too bad with that car. He can save it for the second feature. Uh, that's the one bad side to Twin 50 racing is uh, if you have a bad first night out, you could lose some cars, and or first race out, rather. You could lose some cars that won't be able to return for the second one. Out front, it, though, it's still all Nick Neary. Neary's got a 1.1 second lead as he's got that Martin Jewelry number 17 hooked up. The battle started to brew a little bit behind them for the second position. Patrick Starpoli's closing up on the back bumper of Cody Stickler. Don't know if Stickler's in save mode and now is going to hit the go button. Yeah, well, Stickler didn't quite have the qualifying effort he was probably hoping for. He started sixth. Uh, looks like his car dialed in for a longer run here. Starpoli right on his back bumper, though. In fact, Stickler going to stretch it out a car length or two as we are now halfway through this 50 lap race. Everybody's kind of getting in a rhythm now, seeing what their cars have and your top 10 is I'll give it to you. Nick Neary in the 70, Cody Stickler in the 46, Patrick Starpoli in the 64, Danny Webster running fourth in the 33, Bray Holmes in the M57, 